Hey guys, it's me Gaming Do, and today I'm here to review not one, not two, not three, but four Loud House episodes. Um, these are the episodes that came out in between um, my last review, which was Teachers Union and Frenzy. And I know I already technically reviewed Tripped in my uh, top five best and worst episodes remake, but I decided I'm going to give it an individual review, go into individual stuff in the episode. And these, this is all four episodes, um, which are Tripped, Head Poets Anxiety, The Mad Scientist, and Deal Me Out. These are the four episodes we're going to review, and without further ado, let's get on to Trip. I, if you guys didn't like my opinion on Frenzy, you're going to love my opinion on Trip because I loved this episode. This episode, I think next to 11 Louds of Leapin', is the best special of the Loud House, and quite possibly... Better than, like, 90% of the Spongebob specials. I think only episodes like Friend or Foe and, uh... I'm not really trying to compare Spongebob and the Loud House, because... Pre-movie Spongebob, I personally think, is a little better than the Loud House. But I think the Loud House is, best, is better than anything else Spongebob other than pre-movie. Other than pre-movie, I think The Loud House is better than anything Spongebob. Except pre-movie, but... I think except Friend or Foe and... Christmas Who? Pretty much every other special... For The Loud House is better. This is pretty much better than any other Spongebob special. Anyways, enough of Spongebob, um... And that's only by a little bit that I like pre-movie Spongebob more than Loud House. It's only by a little margin. But, what am I saying? Um, Tripped is a fantastic episode for more than just one reason. Every single character has a moment to shine in this episode. Some more than others... But they have great shining moments. That's what I loved about this episode. Everyone gets a very decent amount of screen time. You see Lori with the bean chips. Lenny with... Lenny with the egg sandwiches and the fashion advice and stuff like that. You got... Oh, in the beginning of the episode, basically the lads are trying to make money to go on a road trip. And honestly, they have some pretty creative ways to... They have some pretty creative ways to make it. Like, Lenny gives fashion advice. Lori's in a food truck with Lynn Sr. Um, Lynn shovels the driveway. Uh... There's a bunch of others that I can't memorize off my top of my head, but that's okay. I still love the moments in this episode. Road Trip and Blues, next to the Christmas song, is the best song on the show. It's so damn catchy. It's not even funny. I can't stop singing the song. Road trip in blues. I, 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 there we go. I just, I, I just can't stop singing that song. It's one of Nickelodeon's probably top ten best songs ever released. It's so damn catchy. And is this episode heartfelt? Um, I think so. It's not really sad, it's that the family has to work together, and they go through so much in this episode. Vanzilla is taken away probably 
a little more than halfway through the episode, I think. And then they have to find, then they supposedly go on a prison bus, which I think this is Lenny's best part in the episode, is when she mistakes a pair of handcuffs for a fashion accessory. I honestly laughed out loud during that scene. That's Lenny's best part in this episode is the handcuff gag. Um, but I think another best part of this episode is the ending of the episode with the airplane. Holy shit. That is the Loud House's most action-oriented scene in the history of the show. Just, I never expected the show would get this much action, but it does in this episode. With the playing gag. I was legitimately on the edge of my seat with this scene. Oh my god. What else can I say about Tripped? Nothing. That's why I am giving Tripped a 10 out of 10. Only beaten by one episode this season. Next is Head Poet's Anxiety, which, pretty similar to Tripped, I love this episode. I did. Truly, this episode is amazing. The bonding between Luann and Lucy may actually be one of my new favorite bondings of the siblings in the show. Now, I'd say... I don't know if it quite beats like Lincoln and Luna or Lincoln and Lenny, but it's up there. Or Lucy, Lori, and Lenny. But it's definitely up there as one of my favorite sibling relationships in the show. If you're saying, do you ship them as a couple? Listen, I'm going to get something off my chest right now. That, I don't know, it's either going to trigger some people or it's going to make some people really fucking happy. I fucking hate Loud Cess. I don't ship any of the siblings with any of the other siblings. What I mean by relationship is a sister relationship or a sister-brother relationship. Not a freaking romantic relationship. Get that out of your fucking head. I'm sorry if I'm vulgar, and I'm also kind of sorry for my frenzy review being vulgar, but come on. They're siblings. They, they, they came from the same mother and father. Why would you ship them? I, I can understand maybe Lincoln, Lenny, and Luna maybe... They give Lincoln a kiss on the cheek or something. Or give him a hug. That's fine. I can understand that. Or even comfort them when they're crying. That's fine. But no kissing on the lips. And no sexual intercourse. That is just disgusting. It's it's too foul for me. Anyways, enough of that point. I think Lucy and Luann's relationship in this episode was just amazing. It was one of the best relationships in the Loud House, truly. Um, Lucy is basically ashamed at the end of the episode that Luann wanted to go on stage in Royal Woods for years to do her comedy... But then Lucy got the chance to read her poetry, and Luann basically got jealous, and this kind of makes Lucy really guilty. And this proves why Lucy and Luann are both in my top five favorite siblings. Because when they bond with someone, it's great. Such as, I'll go into other episode examples. Fandom Pains with Lori and Lenny. They get along perfectly. In 
Funny business. Luann and Lincoln, that was a great bonding. Ah, uh, slew through consequences. As horrible as that episode was, I liked, the only thing I liked about the episode was the bonding between Lucy and Lincoln. When Lucy bonds with somebody, it's generally known it's going to be a good episode, with the exception of Sleuther Consequences and Raw Deal. Um, everyone else was decent in this episode. I'm not going to say they were perfect, but it's a really good episode. I don't know what else I can say. Fan... No, fuck. Not fandom pain. Head Poet's Anxiety. Well, I don't think is quite as good as Tripped. I'm still going to give it a 9 out of 10. It is just an amazing episode that really captures a good sibling relationship. The Mad Scientist. What's my opinion on this episode? Listen, I'm not a huge Lisa Loud fan, but I surprisingly thoroughly enjoyed this episode. Really, Lisa might move from number 9 to number 8 or 7 now because of this episode. Her character development that she's more than just some aimless scientist is just amazing. I know it was kind of lightly shown in Eleven Lads of Leaping, but this is where I really freaking shine. The song in this episode, well, I don't think was quite as good as Road Trip and Blues or, or the Christmas song, is really catchy. It's still a catchy song. The Lab is Where I Belong is a really catchy song. I also love that the siblings truly miss their other sister who's gone. Which, if I was to give Garage Band, which is almost a perfect episode in my opinion, a complaint, it's that I don't think the siblings really quite missed Lori enough. This episode truly shows that I mean, they kind of did, but I don't think it was enough. I think the only ones that may have truly missed Lori were Lenny and Lana. Other than that, it really didn't show. Um, but every single sibling misses Lisa. And she, deep down inside, misses them too. Such as... There's like flashbacks where... Lenny shows Lisa to zip up her pajamas. Um, Lori reading her a story. It's, um, the fact that she has to bring a skeleton model into bed with her because she's so lonely, I guess you could say. That's real good character development. Do I have any complaints with this episode? Um, kind of, but it's really not that big. My biggest complaint with this episode is the atmosphere with, like, the science lab and stuff like that really doesn't really appeal to me that much. Not really. It's a little boring, and it's... A li the scientists in the episode are a little boring and stuff like that, but besides that, this was a surprisingly good episode that I think deserves about a 7.5 out of 10. This was a surprisingly good episode, and I hope we get more Lisa episodes like this. The last episode today is Deal Me Out, which is personally my worst episode I'm reviewing now, but I'd still say it's a good episode. But I do have a few complaints about it. Everyone outside of Lincoln, Clyde, and the teenagers at the end of the episode 
were honestly really dislikable in this episode. They varied from annoying to just outright snobbish. But I can't tell you how much I adore how Lincoln and Clyde met. That could be in my top... That could be another one of my favorite moments of this series. And it comes from a good episode, but not a great episode. I love how they met. That's like a bunch of points already. And the relationship they're showing about how they don't want to seem uncool to each other with trying to hide that they really do love Ace Savvy, it's... It sort of reminds me of the Spongebob episode Roller Cowards. You know why? Because in that episode, Spongebob was trying to avoid that he was scared for the roller coaster and so was Patrick. That sort of reminds me of this episode. This episode sort of reminds me of that episode. And Roller Cowards is a really good post-movie episode. But... Like I said, there was a lot of snobbish characters in this episode, and really, besides Lincoln, Clyde, and the teens, and Flip. Flip was pretty good in this episode. Everyone else is just kind of snobbish to just really annoying, but like the side characters and stuff like that. But there is enough good in this episode to call it a good episode. So I'm going to give it a... 7 out of 10. Just good enough to be called a good episode. If it was... M if there was a little more wrong with it, it probably would have just been an okay episode. But there's just enough in there to call it a good episode. So that's basically it. I hope this kind of makes up for Thursday's video. I'm sorry if I got a little vulgar with the loud cess part. Uh... I really wasn't intending to offend people. I just was stating my honest opinion on the episode. And don't get me wrong. I still hate Frenzy. There's nothing you can change about that. But I respect everyone's opinions on if they like the episode. So please respect mine, though, is all I'm asking. I respect your opinion. If you like Frenzy, that's great. But I just personally don't like it, okay? So that's it. Gaming 2 here. See you later. Bye.